Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, Jeremy here, back for another episode review of Supernatural Season 7. This is number 13, The Slice Girls. Now, it was kind of interesting because a lot of people were talking about this one being a bad one, and apparently the next one's bad too. And some of the comments I can agree with, some of them I, I kind of a little bit skeptical on but let's talk about the episode itself this episode is revolving around a bunch of different things grief that the boys are dealing with still with bobby and then this episode also focuses on just how difficult it is to continue doing what they do without bobby around having to go through very strange and odd professor means to find someone which is very much akin to the beginning of the show the first season they did is something similar i remember them coming across the professor who was played by uh, Smoking Man from uh, X-Files for the Scarecrow episode, if I'm correct. So it was kind of interesting to see that aspect again for the show. They also are dealing with these guys getting their hands and feet cut off, all the while having this symbol carved in their chest. And it all relates to this cult of Amazon, <laughs> Amazon women who go out, find a guy, screw him, they then have a child that basically has the extreme version of a clone trooper uh, um, uh, <laughs> growing up. They kill the guy who does it as part of the ritual. And in this episode, Dean becomes a father, sort of. Now, I don't know whether he just forgot the pullout game. <laughs> the, the episode ends with Dean and his daughter having a confrontation where she has to kill him and he's trying to convince her to not do so and Sam just comes in and he's like bang just kills her and then there's an argument in the car afterwards where Dean is kind of trying to shit blame shift almost and Sam's like you, you killed my friend you said your gut felt it that you were going to you know she was going to do something so why can't I do the same and Dean doesn't have as much of a very good defense if he, he doesn't even really have a defense at all he does make that really low-handed like you're just bigger and like and sam's just like i just don't want you to die man i can see the kind of the messiness of that argument because we already had sam just inexplicably forgive dean in the easiest means possible i still am a bit salty about that considering they kept that and I thought that whole thing was buried, but nope, they're bringing it up again, so you, you have to refer to it again. The horror aspect of this episode, holy shit, are the kills bloody, like, brutal. There was that kind of interesting back and forth montage between Dean getting it on with the Amazon and one of the guys being brutally murdered. It did have a lot all over the place. Like, this episode definitely has a lot of tonal all over, like, the, the weird uh, jokes with the professor, the Amazon women. <laughs> doing what they do and being basically like an evil version of what we're used to from the DC comics. The whole aspect of Dean and Sam not being able to really forgive each other or being at odds with each other again. And then there's Bobby's possible ghost, that whole maybeism that's happening. That was actually subtle of Supernatural. Holy shit. Like, I forgot this show could do subtle. I thought that Bobby was going to be revealed by the end of the episode. I thought it was going to happen, but it didn't. And I, I give it credit on that. So that's why actually I don't think this episode is as bad as people put it to be. I don't think it's a great episode either, but it's e? It's okay, I think. Uh, there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of back and forth. I I do feel that that aspect with Dean having no real good argument, but yet just how they portray it, they still have him win the conversation with Sam. I thought that was a little strange. But in the end, I'm going to give the Slice Girls a 3 out of 7. It's messy. That's probably the biggest issue I have with the episode is there's just this, this tonal tonality all over the place. And also the brothers are acting like they've never done this before. Like in terms of trying to find someone outside of Bobby, yet the entire first season was that. I understand they could get used to it, but it's not like they didn't have this means before. Uh, but anyways, those are my thoughts about this episode. Let's see what you guys have to say. I like when Monsters of the Week dives into what's going on below the surface of the brothers, and I think it does a really good job here. You're just as screwed up as I am. You're just bigger. This whole episode put down the groundwork uh, for how to write Dean's character when he is in a bad place, which he goes into a lot in the later seasons, and I swear he has written in the same every time. 
He is so careless in this episode that it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch Dean go through the motions in the worst possible way, and Sam's r right to be worried that it'll get, it'll get him killed. Speaking of Sam, yeah, he goes through a whole hell of a balancing act. He was trying to stay sane while trying to keep his brother from going off the rails. He's obviously very worried about Dean, and he's obviously trying to not to beat his brother over the head with it. Even he, even he said at the end, I don't care how Dean feels, I, he just wants him not to get killed. That scene in the Impala, as they argue about Amy and, it, and Emma and Dean choking and not having his head in the game, was so poignant. In that moment when Sam asked his brother just not to get killed, he was so small and weak to me. He needs Dean and Dean needs to be Dean. I say that at this point in season 7 is when the brothers reach their lowest point in the series. 5 out of 7, good episode. The episode gave us a good, kind of gloomy look at the brothers' respective headspaces, and I liked it a lot. I didn't talk about this monster storyline that much as it was secondary, as I said to the main story, and just keep it as short as possible. Thank you. Uh, no, I get where you're coming from, and I kind of agree on some point. I think it's just the kind of weird-ass hypocrisy from the earlier uh, interaction with uh, Sam's friend that just like it's this giant luminous cloud that's really hard not to you know kind of think about so but I see where you're coming from the slice girls is a good episode and concept but execution is all over the place I do love me some gore re horror of a man being slaughtered while Dean's having some sexy time it's alone uh, let alone it's fun to see Dean just have no strings attached get play himself played again if any of the monster, if any monster that has ha that had as a kid with Dean, I can't think of a better monster than an Amazon. Emma gives me Twilight Ren Renesme vibes, and I feel that is exactly what they were going for. It's interestingly confusing that it looks like Emma is resisting the ritual and the rites of becoming an Amazon, and suddenly becomes twisted at the end. Although I'm not sure it's fair to say that Sam's parallel, his monster, former monster lover Amy with Emma since Emma was not kill has not killed a single person. It's not by any means the worst episode of Supernatural, but often forgetful, and I wish we had more episodes to delve into Amazon lore and make a bigger conflict. Yeah, actually, to be honest, if I'm correct, they don't come back again. They would have been a better villain than, I don't know, the fucking British Men of Letters, but maybe that might be a little bit of a stretch to say. But yeah, I kind of wonder what happened to them because... That would have been an interesting to keep bringing them back. The Slice Girls, this episode is probably one of the biggest characters that was totally wasted to me. Emma, Emma Dean's daughter. I really hated that she gets killed at the end of the episode. I like how the actress who played 16-year-old Emma, even though Dean knows she's a monster and needs to be killed, she's also his daughter. I'm not surprised that he choked because of how much family means to him. Emma definitely would have been a great addition to the show and then could have uh, feel the space that Ben was for Dean and later with Jack and Dab era sucks. We never saw Emma's mother again. Are the Amazons after this episode? Oh, well, that answers it. Yeah, you know, that something, because they do play it out that you think that she's resisting something, right? You, she's resisting the right. She's resisting all of everything that's happening. So why do they all of a sudden just 180 and they don't commit to it? I think that's another kind of odd... I don't know, like... It's a strange, like, I feel like it, it helps contribute to that weird tonal... Sh uh, unfamiliarness that this episode has a little bit dragging it down. I know this is a long comment, but trust me, this episode must be analyzed. Slice Girls is my ninth worth episode in the entire series because, in my opinion, the majority of the episodes with Sarah Gamble's era can be summed up right here. Don't see it? Allow me to explain. You have a great setup for many emotional storylines to come. After losing Cass and Bobby, Dean finally has someone he can relate to and care about more. A daughter. Think of the possibility of this scenario. We could have Dean as a father. What an amazing idea. Considering he admired John, he, but he didn't agree with how he raised them, it would have been so much interesting to see him handle being a parent and doing things differently. Emma could have been an interesting character. They could have explored her duality as a human and a monster split between the sides and ultimately choosing the right way or the wrong way. We could have seen her become a welcome addition to the general male fo co focus cast we were used to. If the character resonated with fan well with fans, she could have had a spinoff of her own, and if not, she could have just gone in a tragic way. There was literally an infinite amount of potential with this concept, and it would have given purpose to the unnecessary deaths that, ha that occurred in the season. But instead, what happened? Sam blasts Emma out of nowhere, becoming instantly the most unlikable character of the season, and the brothers brush the entire thing off in the next episode. Yeah, that, I, ooh, yeah, I can see that. And oh my god, that's the problem, whether you're a fan of the season or not. Stuff is simply happening with no humanity. Because that is not that was not important to Sarah Gamble, the identity and the characters, who cares? It can't be more 
support and then the weird monsters and more weird monsters and more weird monsters. So much character development is now gone because of the showrunner's insistence on focusing on just creatures and not the characters. This is the main reason I don't like season 7. It is a season where the boys don't behave like characters we know and love and they become <laughs> as a they come off as unlikable. I'm glad Sarah's doing better with her career, but she, but what she did here was definitely wrong. This is actually probably one of the best criticisms I could think of for this episode. You did a better job than I did. Because, yeah, that is actually a very good point. The potential that they could have done with a daughter character. She would have been a more welcome addition than Jack. I, I'm sorry, I never liked Jack. I thought Jack's stick got old after his fourth episode. And the fact that he never developed as a character, he just kept on being this dumb, stupid man baby. I don't know. But no, thank you for your comment. Sorry that yours was not seen for a little bit. It, it, yeah, um, I had to approve it, and I forget to check that sometimes. But yeah, no, thank you. All right, guys, thank you for your comments. Much appreciated. Now we've got Plucky Penny Whistle Magic Menagerie. How the fuck am I going to put that in the video title? Yeah, that's coming up next, so give me your guys' thoughts and comments about that episode. I, if that's the title, I, I'm thinking this episode might not be good, but I guess we'll see. Until then, guys, thank you for all the video views last year. They were very, very much appreciated. Sorry again for the delay of this episode review due to uh, my computer and having the shits and then having to find uh, a new means of getting an editing program back. But we're back on track again, and we will be halfway through, over halfway through the season, uh, come after this review. So, woohoo! And I uh, hope you guys keep enjoying the reviews, and let's keep going. Let's get this fucking season over with. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.